Shalom Zion. So we got a very exciting lesson today. You know, this thing's been on my mind for the last three weeks. And I'm telling you, you know, and just thinking about it, it just giving me the chills. You know, saints, have you ever had that time where you just, you know, you've read over certain scriptures like many times. And then that one time you read over it and you just catch something new that you've never even seen. And you're like, wow, you know, I read over this a hundred times. And now all of a sudden the light just popped off. You know, you, see, you always see something new every time you read the scriptures. You know, and the way I study, I don't just do surface reading. You know, it may take me maybe two hours just to get to a chapter because what I do is I stop in between and I want to compare every verse I possibly can. Because when I'm studying something, it I mean, I study for keeps. I ain't just reading and studying just to, to, to gain something. I'm, I'm studying for keeps. And when I, when I get it, I may be a slow learner, but when I get it, I got it. And that thing is in my mind and, and, it's, and it's there for good. So, you know, like our forefathers, we got to study line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. You know, and that's how we're going to really gain a, a much better understanding of Yah's word. So we're going to be talking about the gathering. That's what I titled it, the gathering. Now, I've been really paying attention to a lot of things that's been going on in this world. Now all the dots and the moving pieces are coming together. And and I tru truly believe with a lot of us, especially you all, you all are starting to see the dots being connected. Okay? And that's what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be connecting some dots. And and I truly believe that you're going to be pretty amazed of what the Holy Spirit has is is is, is going to be showing us here. Um, in this in this lesson and you're going to see it in a way that you've probably never seen it before so i want you to bear with me because we have a lot to talk about so if you got just make sure you get your pen and paper whatever you got a notebook because we got a lot of scriptures to get into we got a lot of things to compare because i'm telling you zion this thing's going to excite you and i got some things i want to share with you and like I said, you, you're going to see it. You're going to start connecting the dots and it's going to all uh, make sense to you. Because see, one thing about the word of the most high, the word of the most high is very consistent. And, you know, it's repetitive because it repeats certain things, certain things throughout the scriptures. You're going to hear and see the most high repeat, you know, and it's all for the saving of his chosen people. So before we get in to the scriptures, because that's all we're going to do. No music, no nothing. So I need you all to really bear with me and to pay close attention and take notes. If you got to rewind and go through the lesson again, then, then do that. Because we're going to be dealing with just genuine, hardcore scriptures in this lesson. Now, before we start getting into the scriptures in this lesson, so I just want to let you all know that I'm going to be reading from the uh, some people pronounce it the Safar. Some people, you may know it as the Sefer Bible. So for those of you who don't know what the Sefer Bible is, you may be asking, well, what is it? Well, the Sefer Bible in Hebrew, it just means divine, divine book. And um, I use this a lot in my in my personal studies. Uh, I just haven't really told you all about it because, you know, this is something I knew. But I really, I really like it. Now, is the Sefer Bible perfect? Absolutely not. You know, just like the King James, there's a lot of uh, translation flaws. Now, does that make the word of the Most High null and void? Absolutely not. Now, we all know that the word of the Most High was translated by the heathens because of the sins of our forefathers. Therefore, they was taken out of our hands and they changed it up. But still, uh, you can research it yourself. The Sefer Bible is more reliable than the King James because what I like about the Sefer is that it replaces the original Hebrew names. Uh, like, for example, when you read in the King James, you're going to see Jesus a lot. You're going to see Lord. You're going to see God. So it replaces Lord and God with Yahuwah. And then Jesus, it'll, it'll have Yehosha, Yehoshua. And then uh, you will not see the word Christian in this book. Because when you read in Acts, because 
Christian was added later. And so when these pagans got a hold to our scriptures, they added it. They added things in their translation to to make it geared towards Sunday worship, pagan worship. But I just want to make it clear, brothers and sisters, just because there's translation flaws in our scripture doesn't mean you put the Bible down. It doesn't mean you stop reading it. Now, let me make it very clear. The word of the Most High was written, was inspired by the Holy Spirit, written by holy man of Yah. All right. So we just want to make sure we get that clear. Just because the translations might be off doesn't make the word of the Most High null and void. Now, you may be asking, do I need a Sefer Bible? No, you don't. And, you know, whatever you got to use whatever you have, brothers and sisters. The Most High says in Zephaniah, he's going to make everything right. He's going to bring back all the purities that was taken from us. All right. He's going to restore everything, restore the language, restore the word, all that. So for now, we got to use what we have. And you can thank our forefathers for that, because if it wasn't for them, had they not sinned, we would be ruling the world right now. So we know how that went. So we just we, we got to push forward and take take what the most high has given us and and just run with it. All right. And real quick, another thing I like about the Sefer Bible is that it has all the lost books in there. So just look at the table of continents and everything. You have your you have your Torah, and then you got the Jubilees, your Enoch, um, Jasher, and then you go on down. Of course, and then what I like also what I like about it is that you have everything, all the books that are written in chronological order the way it should have been. So it's not mixed up. So when you look at the King James, uh, a lot of the uh, your chapters. Your books are kind of out of order, out of sequence. So the Sefer Bible, everything is put in sequence uh, the way it, it, sh it should have been. And you have your Apocrypha. You have the bell and the dragon. That's really good. It's the story of Daniel, how he destroyed those idols and everything. That's a good one to read. You ought to check that one out. So I just wanted to show you this. But with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and start digging deep into the scriptures. So we're going to start with Jeremiah. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Jeremiah chapter 32. And we're going to read verse 37. All right. And again, just bear with me, brothers and sisters, because I'm, I'm really excited. I can barely contain myself. So I'm going to have to remind myself to, to speak slowly and not speak too quickly. All right, let's read. And it says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. Now, I'm going to start right there. So if you got a pen, just write, just make a note of that. However you want to write it down, just write, uh, you can write Yah or whatever. Yah will gather them out of all countries. Now, there's a reason why I'm having you do this. Because it's going to make total sense to you towards the end. So I'll read that again. It says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. Who is he talking about? Of course, we know that's talking about Yah's chosen people, his elect. All right, whether I have driven them in my anger. Well, why was the Most High angry? Because we sinned. We went after other idols. We went, we went after the other nations, gods, their women, their ways. So the Most High was angry and drove us to the four corners of the earth. And it says, let me, let me start over again because I don't want to lose my train of thought says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place. Now, we're going to talk about that. You can write that down to this place. We're going, we're going to talk about that later. I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely now i want you to notice something zion so the same way the most high drove us to the four corners in his anger and in his fury and in his great wrath he's going to bring us out of those same countries the same way with anger and fury and great wrath i really want you to pay close attention to that because the same way the most high drove us into captivity with all the anger 
the wrath and the fury, he's going to bring us out with those same three with wrath, with fury and um, all that with uh, anger, fury and great wrath and also to add destruction. But instead of it being on us, it's going to be on the heathen nations. It's going to be on the nations that have kept us in captivity, the nations that has kept us in bondage. So when you look at a world map, and where are we today? Well, we're all over. We're spread to the seven continents, to the four corners of the earth. And our people are everywhere. Everywhere you see on this map, you can find our people because we were, we were scattered. And we're going to talk a little more about the uh, transatlantic slave trade because it was the only slave trade that spread us to the four corners of the earth. Now, we were all together when we were in Egypt, Babylon, ba Babylon, Persia. You know, we were all together. This is the only captivity where we're spread to the four corners of the earth. And see, this, this is why this gathering is going to be much special. It's going to be much special than even when we came out of Egypt together. And this is why this gathering is going to be much more special because, see, the Most High is not just gathering us from one consolidated location. He's going to be gathering us from all over the world. And that's going to be a, an extremely horrific sight to see. And you're talking about trembling. The heathens will be trembling to see such a great act like that. Now, I showed you earlier the way the Most High sent us into captivity with fury, anger, and great wrath. He's going to bring us out. So this is what's going to happen. Now let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 3 and verse 27 because I want to, I want to share something with you here. So let's, let's just read this. Let's talk about the strong man. Let's read this right quick. It says, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. All right, so no man can enter into a strong man's house who is the strong man in this current day? Job 9.24 The world is given into the hands of the wicked. Your Rothschilds, your Rockefellers, the Queen of London, all your high-powered people who are controlling this world is your strong man. All right? So what are the spoils of his goods? What is his goods? It's the fatness of the land all over the world. Everything that they own, all the money, all the banks that they own. So the Most High is going to bind all of this up. He's going to bind these wicked world rulers. Now, I can tell you one of the ways that's going to happen. Now, think about this for a minute, saints. What is the best way that you can hurt heathens? You hit them in their pockets. Now, we know that we're living in a time where this economy is getting ready to pop. The bubble is so huge. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm surprised that it hasn't even crashed yet. I'm surprised that it's still going on this long. But the economy will crash. And that's one of the moving pieces that are happening. And when the Most High shuts this stuff down, we already see that the Most High is starting to tie the little rope around them. He's pulling the strings because, see, the Most High is the one who's really in control. And these people think they're ruling the world, but they're really not. You know, they only, it's only given into their hands for a period of time. But the Most High is the one who's really pulling the strings. And he's wrapping this invisible string around these world leaders, binding them, binding them up, getting ready to put a lockdown on them. And when the Most High crashes this economy, it's going to hurt them the most because what are they going to do? They thrive off of money. They love money 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 is the root the love of money is the root of all evil so these wicked devils they love money everything they do is money 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 but the most high is getting ready to shut that down so the most high is going to bind these wicked rulers and he's going to spoil their goods it's going to ruin everything this is why you see the economy getting ready to crash. This is why you see all these trade wars going on. 
leading up to World War III, all of it is part of all the moving pieces. All right, let's go over to Ezekiel chapter 20, and let's just read uh, verse 34. And we're going to come back later. We're going to talk about 35, but I'm not ready to get into that one yet. So let's look at verse 34. And it says, and I will bring you out from the people. And I will gather you out of the countries. Now, the key word, brothers and sisters, uh, compare this with Jeremiah uh, 32. We just read in 32. Remember, I told you to write, gather you out of the countries. So read that again. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Meaning that we are scattered to the four corners of the earth, not just here in the U.S. Because slavery wasn't just here in the United States. It was all over the world. The whole world benefited from slavery. It was just most, most prevalent here because we live in the United States. And we know um, the biggest one of the biggest slave trades was here in the United States and South America. It goes on to say, with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Remember I said earlier, the same way the Most High drove us into captivity, he's going to He's going to bring us out of captivity the same way. But this time, fury and all his wrath poured on the heathen nations, on the countries that we are scattered to. Really want you to get that. But don't worry, we're, we're building up. We're building a foundation. And we still got uh, a ways to go. All right, so go ahead and grab your Bibles. Let's go ahead and turn over to Jeremiah. Jer Jeremiah chapter 30. And let's look at verse 11. It says, For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered you. Another key word, whither I have scattered you. All right. He said he's going to make a full end of all nations. Remember, I said the same way the Most High drove us into captivity. He's going to bring us out, but with much great fury and power and destruction. He says, I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you. Yet will I not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. So what does that mean? Now, when you read Deuteronomy 28 and compare it with this, that means that we have been suffering for the sins of our forefathers. This is what this verse is talking about. It says, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. And we've paid a heavy price, brothers and sisters, for the sins of our forefathers. We are at the complete bottom. We are heavily discriminated against. We are hated among the nations. We get treated any kind of way, and we are still considered a fifth of a person by the rest of the world. The laws are not for us, brothers and sisters. We are not included in their constitution. That's why it says what it says. Slavery shall not exist, exist except by prison. Now, when they, when they built these prisons, they built these prisons with the intentions of making sure our brothers and sisters stay in jail so they can put them in slavery. And that's what this whole stuff is about. You know, we don't own the drug cartels. We don't own the poppy fields. We don't own all that stuff. But yet, you have all these blacks who get gathered up and put in jail. It's a whole agenda behind that. But they're going to pay. The heathens are going to pay. But the point I want to make is that the Most High is going to gather his people. He's going to gather his people. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because you have groups of people, so-called Hebrews, who are teaching you that you got to flee America. And that's based upon their theory of America being Babylon. But America is not Babylon. It is not Babylon itself, it is part of Babylon. Babylon is a worldwide system. I don't care where you move to, brothers and sisters. You're going to get the same treatment. It's not going to be the same. A lot of people are talking about moving to Africa. Well, who do you think controls Africa? The French, the British, and now China is sticking their paws in Africa. 
So you want to move to a place where it's still controlled by the wicked. You see how crazy that sounds? You know, and we don't, the, the Most High did not tell us that it's our responsibility to gather ourselves up and to go to one place. What's so hard to believe that? What, why is it so hard to trust that the Most High is going to do this? You see, they had the same problem when their backs was against the Red Sea. All of a sudden, they saw Pharaoh's army and they became frightened. Oh, no, we're going to go back into slavery. They're going to take us back to Egypt. They're scared. Regardless of the ten plagues that they saw, they were still scared. And the Most High had to show them by splitting the Red Sea that the Most High was in control. But see, we still had that thought, brothers and sisters. We still had that fear in our minds that we got to flee. The Most High says, wait on me. He's going to do it. He's going to do the gathering. He's going to use his angels to gather us from the four corners of the earth. And that's a fact. Stop doubting the Most High and believe in his word. All right, so go ahead and turn in your Bible to the Apocrypha, 2nd Esdras, 2nd Esdras, chapter 15, and I'm going to read verses um, 10 through 12. And I'm just going to read it through, and then we're going to come back up, and we're going to talk about some things. So it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I would not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Mitzrayim. Now it's talking about Egypt, and it's the Hebrew word for Egypt. Verse 11, but I will bring, now listen closely to this verse, another key, another key word, brothers and sisters. Write this down. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Misraim with plagues as before. Now let me start right there. Now when it says, I will smite Misraim, is it talking about the literal physical Egypt in Africa. Now, when you look up uh, in the Strongs, it's going to tell you when you look up Egypt from this particular path, this passage, it's going to uh, tell you that it's a country uh, in Northeast Africa. But it's also referring to bondage. That's what Egypt is. It's bondage. So it's not talking about in this passage, it's not talking about literal Egypt because all of our people are not concentrated in the country of uh, the country of Egypt, we're scattered all over. So Egypt, brothers and sisters, or Misraim, is where our people are scattered to. United States is spiritual Egypt. Is our people enslaved? Is our people still in captivity in the United States? Absolutely. Parts of Africa is still Egypt. Is our people scattered throughout Africa? Absolutely. The northern tribes are scattered throughout Africa. Is South America considered Egypt? Absolutely, because our people are there too. What about Europe? Yes, our people are scattered there as well. All over the world, wherever our people are scattered to, that is Egypt. And I'm going to prove that to you even further. And this is why the Most High is going to pour out his fury and wrath on all these nations. Now, let's go back to the end of verse 11. Now, look where it says, as before. In fact, let me just read that. Let me just read 11 over again. It says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Misraim with plagues as before. But when did that happen? Of course, when our forefathers were all back in Egypt, they were smitten with the plagues. And you all know that the 10 plagues that they were smitten with. You had the water turned into blood, the frogs, the lice, the flies. The disease of the livestock, the boils, hell and fire, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn. And so this time, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a lot more plagues than that, though. And we ain't seen nothing yet, brothers and sisters. The Most High is about to put the hammer on these nations. And instead of these plagues coming down on one location, it's going to be worldwide again. Misraim or Egypt, wherever our people are scattered to. And I already showed you some verses where it said the Most High is going to destroy these nations where our people are scattered to. And the word 
of the Most High is not null and void, brothers and sisters. Because the Most High is going to send his angels to activate all of this. We're just seeing that we're just in the beginning stages of this stuff. But it's, it's, it's going down. Now let's continue on. Let's look at verse 12 and it says, Miss Marim shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with plague and punishment that Elohim shall bring upon it. So that means we, we're talking about worldwide destruction, brothers and sisters. We're talking about worldwide calamities. We're talking about worldwide theory that the Most High is going to be raining down on these nations. Because the whole world benefited from our captivity. So they got to pay a price. We have to pay for the sins of our forefathers. They're going to pay for the sins of their forefathers. Now, turn in your Bibles to Zechariah 1, chapter 15. I'm going to show you something right quick. Zechariah 1, 15. And I'm going to show you they took it too far. These wicked heathens took things way too far. And it says, And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. How are they at ease? They benefited from our captivity. They sitting off the fatness of the land, gloating, everything. They mock us, all that stuff. It says, I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Now, for some of you gainsayers that like to always say, well, we were supposed to go into captivity. Yeah, the Most High brought us into captivity because of the sins of our forefathers, but the heathens took it way too far. And they got to pay the price for that. That's why when these plagues start increasing, because some of them are starting to fall now. And it's just going to increase, increase even more. And, you know, when that happens, the world is going to know it. They're going to know it. They're going to know the big difference. Y'all remember in Avengers where Thanos, he drew back and threw that moon at the Avengers? Well, that's how it's going to be with the Most High. He's going to be throwing those plagues on them. It's going to be putting, putting it on them, some, some of them like four at a time. It's going to be throwing it on these heathens. They ain't going to, they ain't going to know what's going on. And already, they hardly know what's going on. They're already meeting together, finding out how they can stop the awakening. They are literally having these round tables, these meetings, when they sit down together to try to configure how they can stop Yah's people from waking up. They're little think tanks. Oh, don't think they're not conspiring. They're conspiring. You know, you go back and read Psalms 83, and they were they will constantly conspire against us until the most high totally breaks them down. All right, so let's continue on because I want to show you when it's talking about Miss Raim, it's talking about spiritual Egypt or everywhere where our people are scattered to the four corners of the earth. So go ahead and turn to Revelation chapter 11, and let's read verse 8. And it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Mizraim, where also our Adonai was crucified. Now it's mentioned here again, Mizraim, but is it talking about the physical Egypt? Of course not. We know that that's talking about specifically the uh, U.S. of A. Now, also, it's dealing with all the other places where our people are scattered at as well, too. See, you got some Hebrews that will read this passage, and they'll conclude this to only be talking about the United States. Yes, slavery was in the United States. And also more, did y'all know that even more slaves were in South America? In different parts of the world. So a lot of people don't know that because they don't do the research to really dig and find out where all the slaves really went to. But there were more slaves in South America than there was America. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the whole world benefited from this. Now, when you read the verse towards the end where it says, which is spiritually called Sodom and Misraim. Now, we know that the United States, uh, I think it was like, maybe six years, a little bit under five years ago, 
where they went ahead and made the whole same same sex marriages legal in all 50 states. Now, somebody you might say, well, that's proof right there to show you that's that's directly talking about the United States. But let me tell you a little something. I lived in Europe for three years. Now, did y'all know that same sex marriages was legal in Europe way before it was legalized in the United States? Did y'all know that? Did y'all also know that bestiality is also legal in Europe? But you didn't know that either. So you got to understand Europe is just as wicked as the U.S. The whole world is wicked. And, you know, America is not even 300 years old. So what do you think America rose from? What do you think she's the children of? The colonizers, the Europeans that came over here, the colonized. So that's that's where the real source comes from. So technically, if you want to pick a location where Babylon truly is, then you can point to the Vatican over there in Rome, the whore church, the, the mother of all harlots. But, Babel, but spiritually, Babylon is worldwide. So no matter where you are in this world, it's under the control of this Babylonian system. Now, how did they crucify our Hamashiach? Because it says we're also our Hamashiach was crucified or Adonai was crucified. Now, did Hamashiach, was he crucified in the United States? Of course not. It was his image that was crucified. What did they do to our forefathers when they brought us over here in slave ships? They demoralized us. They took away our language. They stripped us from our Elohim, made us worship gods of wood and stone. And they put a white Jesus before our forefathers' face. And that's how they crucified our Hamashiach. And they took the Cesare Bourget and told our people, this is your savior. Put it right before our forefathers' face. And our people still worship that thing to this very day. And let's go over to uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 3. And let's look at verse 40, 48. And it says, And laid open the sefer of the Torah, wherein the heathen, the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image, of their images. And this is what they've done. They've taken upon, they've taken it upon themselves to make the one we were supposed to worship, our Hamashiach. But they called his name Jesus, painted him white. Really, Caesar Ray Bourget had just changed the name to Jesus. Or well, Jesus, that's what it really means. And they put that before our forefathers. And our forefathers grew up with that stuff. That's how they did it. And you just, you know, and it makes you sick to your stomach because you wonder how in the world, especially as a black person living on this earth, look to something like that and actually believe that is your savior. You know, and even growing up, I didn't believe in that old white Jesus image. And, you know, that was way before I knew the truth. It was just something about it. It just, it wasn't real. You know, I felt like uh, it just didn't belong. And, you know, as you get older, you realize, you know, they, this is what, this is what they put before our people to make you believe that Hamashiach is supposed to be white, or as they call their Jesus. So anyway, let's continue. I want to um, get another verse that's dealing with spiritual Egypt. So let's go to Deuteronomy. You all know this one very well because many of you came in into this truth just off this verse, this one verse alone, which calls you to research. All right, so Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And Yahuwah shall bring you into Mizraim again with ships by the way whereof I spoke unto you. Ye shall see it no more again. What was it talking about no more again? Our homeland. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So our people are over here enslaved, no one to save us. This pure 
agony and torture, some of the stuff that they did. And I'm going to do a separate lesson because there, there's a thing I want to do on Willie Lynch and just to show you the mentality that's still going on. And I'm going to show you some of the gruesome stuff that they were doing. I mean, stuff that you can't even imagine. You can't even conjure up if you even try. But they would do stuff to our forefathers and have their children. These slave masters would have their children watch that stuff. The glorified and the gloated. So when we came over here on the transatlantic slave trade, and you can see the routes and things where our people were transferred all over. I mean, all over the world. And the whole world benefited from this stuff. And that's why the, the plagues, when they, when they start really increasing and falling, they're going to be so great. They're going, to make, they're going to make the ten plagues of Egypt look like a walk in a park. But this time, these plagues are going to be worldwide. Why? Because our people are scattered to the four corners of the earth. And the Most High already said that he's going to destroy these nations where our people are scattered to. So get ready, saints. We're getting ready to see some serious fireworks go off. All right, let's go. Let's go back to 2 Ezra chapter 15. Now let's look at verse 12. It said, Miss, Miss Rain shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Elohim shall bring upon it. So we know that these plagues are going to be worldwide. And I'm going to show you more proof of that, that it's going to be worldwide. So the same chapter, let's go to verse 5 and 6. It says, Behold, says Yahuwah, I will bring plagues upon the world. Notice it said world. It didn't say a specific location. It says, Behold, says Yahuwah, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Let me read that part again because I don't think some of y'all got that. It says the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And I truly believe one of the plagues that the Most High is bringing upon these heathens is skin cancer, as they so-called melanoma. Just a fancy word for skin cancer. It's tearing them up. But there's a lot more to come. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you just got to look around and start doing the research because it's getting to a point where, where they can't hide it anymore. They, they cannot hide it. They're trying their best to figure out how to stop this, but they can't. Because once the Spirit of the Most High goes out and carries out those orders, oh, that's it. There's no returning. This is it. It ain't, it ain't going to be no make America great again. You're going to see America get worse and worse just like her other counterparts, it's going to get worse and worse. But let me show you what's going to happen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's start with verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessings and the curse. Because when, when, at what time were we really blessed? Well, during King David's time, it was at the height of the Israelite rule. And, you know, our people were blessed because they kept the laws. And then, of course, we're in the latter part of the curses. It goes on to say, which I have set before you, and you shall call them to mind among all the nations, whether Yahuwah, Elahakia, has driven you. Verse 2, and shall return unto Yahuwah, Elahakia, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day. You and your children, with you, with all your heart, and with all your soul. Verse 3. Then, it says, that then, Yahuwah, Elahakia, will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations. Now, the key word, saints, write that down. Gather you from all the nations. We read that three other times. And you can go back and get the scriptures if you need to. It says, and we'll return and gather you from all the nations, whither Yahuwah 
Elahakia has scattered you. So he's getting ready to gather up his people, brothers and sisters. He is getting ready to gather. Now, do we know a pinpoint time of when this is going to happen? Absolutely not. We don't know. And I'm definitely not trying to pinpoint a time. But this we do know. We know that by the signs that we see around us, that we are living in the last seconds of this earth's history. Now, this is what I do believe. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to you. I do believe that before these nukes start popping off, the Most High is going to gather his people. You know, and the Most High has allowed them to build these weapons of mass destruction. And it's like the Most High is going to gather his people so, just we can, so, so that we can see these heathens destroy themselves. But I'm going to show you some things in Ezra that's going to really... Um, really blow your mind because when I read that and then you started connecting and you started connecting the dots, it's like, wow, that, that really makes sense because once those nuke starts flying off, uh, that thing's going to destroy everybody. So the most high is going to have to intervene. And now some of you say, well, what, well, we're already in world war three. Well, technically we are, but it's just the, the, the trade wars and all that stuff is going on right now. But I'm telling you, it's, it's getting close. It is getting really close. And I've never, in my whole time, I've, ne I've never seen uh, anything like this where you see all these forces around the world that have been doing more drills, more training. It's like it's doubled and tripled. And you see a lot more of it now. And technically, this, this thing can pop off at any time. I mean, have y'all been paying attention to what's been going on off the coast of Grenada? The United States wants to invade Venezuela. Y'all heard that little speech that Trump did? And they're trying to make it seem like, well, this man is starving his people. That, that, that's what they do. They put out propaganda to make the public believe that these countries are bad to support them so they can go in and invade them. So I'm telling you, you just, you just got to look around and pay attention. It's going to pop off. And a lot of our people are just are so caught up into escapism, they don't even know what's going on. They're not even paying attention. You talk to, you try to talk to, to them about stuff like this. They look at you like you're crazy, you know? And that's why it pays to seek out the righteousness of the Most High and keep his laws. I know it's hard, saints. I know this walk is not no easy walk, but it's going to all be worth it in the end. Let me prove it to you. And let's jump down to verse 41. Ezekiel chapter 20, and it says, I will accept you with your sweet Savior, our Hamashiach, when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries. There it is again. See, that's what I love about the word of the Most High. It's consistent. Let me start over right quick. It says, I will accept you with your sweet Savior. When I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathens. So the Most High is, is letting us know that he's going to sanctify us before the heathens. In other words, he is letting the world know that we are his holy chosen people, his set apart people. And then he's going to turn around and let these heathens have it and let them go at each other. I mean, it's, it's going to be crazy. Let's go back up, jump back up to verse 34. And let's read, let's read verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people, and I will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand. I mean, that's not, it ain't going to be no quiet. It ain't going to be something that's done in secret. It says, with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So the Most High is not going to only gather us, but he's throwing down some destruction while he's gathering us out of these countries. And, that's, and this is something to rejoice about, brothers and sisters. We should be rejoicing about this. You know, I had someone tell me, oh, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really... Get all happy and everything because we're living in the last days because it's going to be a day of gloom. 
Yeah, it's going to be a day of gloom. But who's it going to be a day of gloom for? For the heathens, not us. You know, when I hear that, if I hear that, you know how we got that, um, we got that alarm that went off on our phones. It, it hit like 200 and, uh, 200 and something million people in throughout the United States. Now, if I hear something like that in the middle of the night, I'm going to rejoice. You know, I wish I wish that thing would go off and it'd be the real thing. I'll head straight to the kitchen and crack open a bottle of wine. All right, so let's go on and let's read verse 35. And it says, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Verse 36. Like as I pleaded with your with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Mitzrayim. So will I plead with you, says Adonai Yahuwah. So yes, we are going to the wilderness. Now how that's going to look, I have no idea. And... You know, a lot of people, I know some people kind of argue or where the place is going to be. Now, I truly believe it's going to probably be maybe the same location as before where our forefathers went. And you know that land in Jerusalem right now is not the is not the average is not the actual size land. Our land span is much bigger than that. But you know what? We don't have nothing to worry about because the most high is going to take care of his people. It ain't going to be like it was last time where it was extended 40 years. It ain't going to be like that because our Hamashiach is going to be here. We're going to have some ruling, trusted members that's going to be ruling. That's going to be ruling. So we ain't got to worry about no man worship. We ain't got to worry about people rising up and all that stuff. Because this was gonna look, look, look what's going to happen. Verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Now listen to verse 38. It says, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. So ain't no wickedness getting into the kingdom, brothers and sisters. Ain't no wickedness, no sorts of abominations, no rebellions. The Most High is going to purge all of that. So don't get discouraged about the wilderness because whatever we're going to have, and hey, if, if that's all we're going to have to do, is if, if we got to do for time being is eat manna, then so be it. I'll eat some manna. I'll eat manna all day long. And but, you know, the most high is going to take care of his people and it's going to be much better. It's we, we, we don't we have no idea what it's going to be like, you know, and I know a lot of our people have really good imagination. They just think that, you know, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be stressful. No, the most high is going to take care of his, of his people. And you already saw what we read earlier is that he's going to sanctify us before the heathens. Now, I'm going to do a total separate lesson on the wilderness, and we're going to call it the wilderness. So that'll be coming out sometime, if y'all is willing, in the near future. Because right now, I want to really stick with the gathering, because it, it's a lot to talk about when you're dealing with the wilderness as well, too. So um, the one want to stay on subject and stay on this gathering. So because I want to get through a few more things here. So let's go to go to Second Ezra chapter 15. And let's look at verse 20 and 21. And it says, Behold, says Elohim, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon, and turn themselves one against another, and repay the things that they have done to them so the most high is going to let them have it when the most high has his people gathered up he's going to let these heathens have it because i'm telling you he's going to let them nuke let them nuke each other let them nuke one another let them destroy one another and we get to sit back and watch the whole thing play out oh recompense is coming and it's going to be sweet let's look at verse 21 and it says, like as they do yet this day, this day, they still shooting up people down the street. They still trying to pump diseases and all kind of stuff. 
into our people. They still discriminate against our people. They hate our people. We are hated among all the nations. It says, like, as they do to yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim. And when you look at it, the Most High is look around you. The Most High is gathering up these nations as we speak, He's preparing them for war. Let's go to Joel. Now pay attention because it's getting ready to get really interesting, brothers and sisters. Joel chapter 3, start with verse 1. It says, for, for behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity, there it is again, of Yehuda and Jerusalem. Now, and this is talking about uh, the, the, the southern and northern tribe. See, this is what I love about the word of the Most High, brothers and sisters. The word of the Most High is so consistent and it's so repetitive because when the Most High repeats things, you got to pay attention to it. Don't just push it off because the Most High is telling us what's getting ready to happen. And we've read this. I've showed you five accounts already where the Most High is going to gather up his people. And we hadn't even hit the New Testament. There, there, there's, there's a few of them in the New Testament where he's going to gather his people from the four corners of the earth. But I want to make a point here. It says, For behold, in those days and in, the, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem, verse 2, I will also gather all the nations. Did we just not read that in Second Ezra? It says, All the nations... And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage. It ain't the kind of pleading where, oh, apologize to my people. Uh-uh. The Most High is getting ready to tear them up. And it says, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage. Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Verse 3 And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and, a, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. This is what they did during slavery. They did all kinds of stuff. Sold our, sold our children, stripped them from their families, traded them for different products. They're going to pay. And the Most High is gathering up all these wicked nations to battle. Now let's look at this. Let's go back to um, second, e second Ezra chapter 15. Let me show you something here. And let's look at verse 29. And it says, Where the nations of the dragons of Arav shall come out with many chariot. This is talking about the world leaders. It's talking about the world armies. All these armies that are gathering up, that the Most High is gathering up as we speak right now. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that they all, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. I'm telling you, brothers, it's getting ready to be a fearsome battle. But where is the Most High's people going to be during this time? We're going to be gathered up. The Most High is going to have us in a safe place. But let's get some more. Let's 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 show you something else. Now, I really want you to pay attention to this one, saints, because there's a reason why we're doing precepts upon precepts. Here a little, there a little. And line upon line. Ezra, uh, second Ezra chapter 15. Let's look at 34. It says, Behold, clouds from the east and from the north. Read that part again. Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south and they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. Now, when you see regular clouds, you know, you, you're not going to be too much alarmed. But these are not clouds, brothers and sisters. They look like clouds. These are nuclear atomic bombs going off from the east to the west to the south to the north. This thing ain't no joke, brothers and sisters. And where are we going to be at this time? The Most High is not going to allow us to be destroyed by this stuff. We're going to be gathered up safely in his bosom. And then he's just going to let these heathens just go at it. 
They're going to let them have it. Let them destroy one another. I'm going to read that again because that sounded sweet. Verse 34. Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south, and they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. Brothers and sisters, we got, so, we got, some, we got enough weapons on this earth to destroy the, the whole world ten times over. And plus some. Verse 35. They shall smite one. They shall smite one upon another. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars. Now when it's talking about stars. It's talking about these world leaders. A lot of these leaders are going to die. Do you think they can hide in their bunkers. And, and hide in their secret chambers. These world leaders are going to perish. It says. And, and smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about rulership. Stars represents people also. And it's, in this case, it's talking about rulership. Stars upon the earth, even their own star, even their own star. And the blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. Boy, y'all really got to start reading this kind of stuff and start connecting the dots because this, this thing... Woo, this thing is getting ready to pop off. And brothers and sisters, we already see the drum beats of World War III. Now I told you we don't need we don't know the time or hour when this is gonna when this is gonna happen. But I know that it's I think it's gonna be a lot sooner than we actually think. You know, what do I know? But I you know, I, I know I see the signs. We we all see the signs that are going around us. I do know this. I can tell you this for sure, brothers and sisters. This earth cannot continue to go on the way it is right now. If this thing continues to go on um, any, any longer, I'm going to be surprised because it, 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 so much is happening right now. All the moving pieces are coming together. And this whole thing is about to pop like a big bubble. It's either do or die. And it, you know these world leaders are getting desperate. The trade wars are going on. Nations are, are, are warring against one another, rising up. All the logistics of World War III are already happening. The physical just hasn't started yet. And boy, when it happens, it's going to happen. Oh, and guess what, saints? It gets even better. Oh, watch this. I'm going to show you something else. Because after these nukes fall and everything, and it creates these big old mushroom clouds from the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, with great horrible boy, these 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 heathens, and and those who are still left, guess what they're gonna go through? Now during this time, remember, y'all's people are gathered up together, so you don't want to be the one that's left behind with these old crazy heathens going through this stuff. Look at verse 22, Second Ezra chapter 16 this time, and verse 22, it says. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Verse 23, and the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted. What kind of weapons on this earth that can waste the whole earth? Nuclear holocaust that can waste the whole earth. But remember, the Most High's people are going to be gathered up. They're going to be safe. They're going to be safe with the Most High. For the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be, shall be cast down. So this thing, now I want you to imagine that. Just imagine that when you see a scene, this is going to look like a scene out of, you ever saw the, the movie, The Book of Eli? It's going to look like a scene just, just like that. Everything's going to be all torn, war-torn. From all these bombs all over the place. And it, it says it. For the earth shall be wasted. And the city shall be cast down. Well where, where are the children of Yah at this time? They're with Hamashiach. We're safe in the wilderness. While all this stuff is going down. Man this, this is some powerful stuff. It says there shall be no man left. To till the earth. And to sow it. Verse 25. The trees shall give fruit. And whom shall gather them? Verse 26. The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all place, 
all places shall be desolate of men. What can make what can make a whole world desolate of men? Nuclear bombs. And now it makes sense why the Most High is allowing these heathens to really advance their weapons. It makes sense to me now. You know, it's like, wow. Okay, the more powerful their weapons, the more destruction it's going to cause. And the Most High is going to turn them on one another and let them destroy themselves. Now, that's going to be powerful, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you see what I'm seeing right now, but I'm just, I got goosebumps. Like, literally, I got goosebumps. This is, this is some exciting stuff, brothers and sisters. And it gets even better. So let's jump down to verse 27. And it says, So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. See, while we're gathered up, all this stuff is going on. This is the aftermatch of the war. And, you know, read, read 2 Ezra 15 and 16, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Verse 28. For of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves, and in the clefts of the rocks. Verse 29. As in a orchard of olives upon every tree there are left three or four olives mm. verse 30 or as when a vineyard is gathered there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard even so in those days there shall be three or four left by them that search their house with the sword it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy because you know you're gonna have some survivors, you're gonna have some people that's that's gonna survive. So when the Most High gathers His people up from the four corners of the earth, it's not gonna be quiet, brothers and sisters. It's gonna be noisy. The whole world is gonna see it. They're gonna know, and they're gonna fear. They're gonna ask the rocks to fall on them, but not quite yet because you you still gotta pay. Recompense, the Most High is gonna put on these nations, and. And boy, we're, 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 we're seeing it. And, you know, a lot of people, and I know some of you get frustrated sometimes because, you know, you witness to your family members and they act like they just don't know what's going on. And, you know, sometimes you just got to stand back and just, just pray for them because, unfortunately, not everybody's going to get it. Prayerfully, majority of our people will wake up at their appointed times. But, you know, that's, that's going to be on, um, for the most high to decide. And as far as the time frame, that's going to be for the Most High to decide. When he, when the Most High decides to to make this thing pop off, it's going to pop off. But only on the Most High's time, not our time, not anyone else's time. On the Most High's time, brothers and sisters. But we can see the drum beats, though. It's it's getting louder and louder. It's like every day there's something new going on, some threat of of war popping off. Uh, the economy failing. And like I said earlier, I'm surprised the economy is still ha hasn't crashed yet. I'm surprised it's still going on now the way things are. It's crazy out there. You know, this is going to be a horrific sight to witness. And let's go to let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 20. Because I just want to reconfirm what the Most High is going to do for his people. And verse 41. I will accept you with your sweet Savior. When I bring you out from the people and, and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathens. You can't get no more plainer than that, brothers and sisters. Now, they may look at us as a laughing, as a laughing stock. They may mock us. They may do all sorts of manner of things to us. But in the end... They will acknowledge that we are the true children of the Most High. And no heathen will be able to deny that. You know, and that, that's, that, that's why this whole thing, brothers and sisters, it's going to be well worth it. Just hang in there. It's, 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 it's worth it. And, you know, some of you who get discouraged, try encouraging other people, and you'll find that your spirit is starting to become encouraged. But you got to start encouraging others. You can't always expect somebody to encourage you. You got to be the one that's out there trying to encourage people as well. You know, we all got a piece to play in these last day events. And we all we all have a ministry. The, the Most High has charged each and one of us 
to to be a witness of some sort to our people, whether it's on a job, family members, um, somebody you meet on a corner or something like that, walking in the store, whatever, you know, whatever, whenever we, whenever we get that little opportunity, that's a time that you can tell your people who they are, you know? So with, with that being said, brothers and sisters, I really pray that you, you got a much better understanding of this whole gathering and, you know, just go back and really, really study and just research it and everything. That's what we got to do. We got to get out this lazy mode because, you know, it's like, how can I explain it? It's, it's like we want to we wanna be fed, but without having to do the research on our own. And that's really not, that's really not good, brothers and sisters. You know, we, we got we to gotta put our hands to the plow. We got to dig in these scriptures and really read these scriptures, compare scriptures with scriptures, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Rehearsing the scriptures, that's that's how you're gonna gain it. That's how you're gonna gain better understanding of the scriptures. You gotta get in and study it. Just like anything you do, you gotta practice it. You know? So let's go to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. It says, Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of our Hamashiach. So, brothers and sisters, keep your eyes open. Pray, seek out the righteousness of the Most High, keep these laws, and live. And with that being said, I say shalom and stay strong.